Welcome, everyone. We are so excited to have you here today. Uh, we want to welcome you to the Hate Can't Stop a Sisterhood, celebrating bold women and activism from the Stranger Sisters Social Impact Campaign. Thank you guys for being here. I want to say thank you to the Sisterhood and to Odyssey um, for inviting me to, to be here with you all. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this Hate Can't Stop a Sisterhood, celebrating bold women and activism from the Stranger Sisters Social Impact Campaign. We are honored to be together today to celebrate the bold work, and it's seriously bold work, of the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom and the documentary Stranger Sister and its national social impact campaign led by Odyssey Impact, which amplifies the innovative women-led work of building meaningful and intentional bridges across lines of difference and ultimately working to stop hate. And if you're here, I know that you're passionate about stopping hate, working together, building beautiful ties. So thank you for being here. My name is Mona Haider. I am an artist, performer, and poet. And it is truly my pleasure to moderate today's panel on behalf of Odyssey Impact and the Sisterhood. And please note that per Odyssey's commitment to accessibility, you will see a button below to access closed captioning of this event. And we are, we are joined today by our ASL interpreters, Darla Hitchens and Rashida Sharif from Pro Bono ASL. Thank you so much to Darla and Rashida for being here. We really appreciate what you all do and we are grateful. You know, on a more serious note, we did just wanna take a second to honor that these are challenging times. So for, these are challenging times for so many of us around the world right now. And whether it's the ongoing refugee crisis, which unfortunately has just had so many more women and children unfortunately added to it, I wanna offer a chance right now to send a prayer, to send a good thought to all those facing difficulties, challenges, and injustices. That's what this work that we are all here to talk about is for. We are here to talk about the hard things and do the work that eases those hard things and those burdens. And we are here to apply a beautiful balm to heal what hurts in this world. And after all, isn't this what this beautiful film and this beautiful sisterhood is all about? It's about women coming together to make a beautiful, positive impact and change in this world. So thank you for joining us during this hour to honor this work and a slew of gorgeous and amazing women who are not just change makers, but also activists, storytellers, innovators, so many multi-dimensional, incredible women. And hopefully you'll learn and be inspired to reach out and take action in your own communities. And for this hour, we will dive into really beautiful, inspiring dialogue. And you will notice a, a ding dong, and we will have some beautiful um, and exciting pop-up surprise guests who will share their messages. And we will have some trivia and giveaways. You might score some goodies while you're here. And the biggest giveaway is towards the end. So if you stick around, you might get something kind of fun. And we have an esteemed panel of change makers, filmmakers, um, and esteemed guests talking about their work, highlighting some of the ways the film can be a catalyst for dialogue, bridge building. We will hear impact stories from the past year and learn how you personally can take action and get involved in your own community. But first, I want to throw it to the Odyssey and Sisterhood teams. Thank you, Mona. Hello, I'm Evie Constantine. I'm the head of social impact at Odyssey Impact. And I want to respectfully acknowledge the Lenape people who have stewarded the land for generations on which Odyssey Impact is located. As Mona mentioned, we're so excited to celebrate Stranger Sister and the Impact Campaign. Transform Films is the Peabody Award-winning film company that produced the film. And its parent company, Odyssey Impact, is the nonprofit organization leading the National Social Impact Campaign. I'd like to congratulate and shout out the co-directors of Stranger Sister, award-winning filmmakers, Kirsten Kelly and Katie Tabor, who you'll be hearing from today. And special congratulations and thank you to the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom for their collaboration and sisterhood during the film and impact campaign. Odyssey Impact would also like to thank the Lillian Endowment, the Lori M. Tisch Illumination Fund, 
Argosy Family Foundation, the Boom and Gunderson Family Fund, and the Eastman Foundation for their generous support of the Stranger Sister Social Impact Campaign. Now, if you have not yet been a part of the Impact Campaign, I'd like to invite you to join us. The goal is to raise awareness, shift attitudes, and hopefully inspire positive action. When you join, you'll receive access to the film and a digital screening toolkit packed with resources to help you plan an event, including a facilitator guide and discussion guides. You'll also receive the full support of the Odyssey Impact team. So whether you're an educator, a faith leader, community organizer, DEI professional, or anyone who wants to make a difference, it is our hope that you will be inspired today with open minds, open hearts, and open hands to take the baton and continue the important work of the special film and impact campaign. As Mona mentioned, we'll be giving away a special prize of a screening, which we'll announce later in the event. So thank you so much for joining us. And now I'd like to hand off to Tahia Vicalo. Thank you, Evie. Hi, everybody. I'm Tahia Vicalo, Executive Director of the Sisterhood of Sanam Shalom. As we enter the second decade of our existence, the Sisterhood is deliberately engaging in tough conversations with support for one another through challenging personal, interpersonal, and global situations. We're building on amazing relationships and bonds that were and are being formed to connect, educate, and advocate. With educational programs and skill building workshops, such as uh, as workshop in difficult conversations, Israel-Palestine educational programs, cultural competency, uh, and, and others. We uh, also with social justice activism and deep personal connections, we are helping and encouraging our members and communities to stay at the table and navigate, navigate the good times and the challenging times as well. The film Stranger Sister has opened more door for our work because we have reached communities we might never have been in contact with, interfaith centers, universities, seminaries, and many other places. And all have had the opportunity to see the film, learn about our work, and reflect on how the values emphasized in the film play a role in their own lives. I would also like to express at this point my excitement and honor to be in the same virtual space with Mona Heider. For a few years now, my daughters and I have been enjoying Mona's brave and talented work and often danced around the house to her songs. She continues to courageously change biases and misconceptions, just as the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom is doing every day. Thank you, Mona. It is my pleasure to introduce Atia Aftab and Cheryl Olitsky, the co-founders of our wonderful organization. And without their commitment and courage, and sheer grit, we would not be doing this today. Yeah, I think we're gonna dive in and um, you know, really look at what, um, what from the past year has been a really particular inspirational, impactful moment for you all as we kind of embarked on this journey together. I'll get started. I'm Cheryl Olitsky. I'm the co-founder with Atiyah and the founding executive director of the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom. The Sisterhood is based on one simple premise. It's easy to hate someone you don't know. When you know them, it's harder. And when you care and love them, it's almost impossible. And from the day Atiyah and I had this dream till today, that's been the premise of everything we do. And I'd like to share one very impactful um, memory, and there are so many from hundreds of thousands of sisters around the world, but I'm gonna share a personal one, which is very pertinent given what's happening on the ground right now in Israel and Palestine. And it was during the Gaza war, one of the Gaza wars, um, and I was invited to a sisters for iftar, for a breakfast during Ramadan. And things were very bad in Gaza and in Israel. And she opened the door and said, Cheryl, I so want to hate you right now because of what's happening in Gaza, but I can't. I know you, I love you. I know this isn't about you and come on into my house because my house is your house. And that's the message of the sisterhood going from strangers to sisters who you love and realizing that negative stereotypes and negative perceptions are just that. 
and they do not apply to full groups. That's my, my story of impact. Thank you so much, Cheryl. It is such a pleasure to be here today. It has been such a up and down past two years since we had our, our launch, right? Uh, and I'm saying our as if it's, you know, my film, but, <laughs> you know, we had our, we had our, um, our debut about two years ago when the film was first produced and um, it has impacted me personally. The sisterhood, I can tell you so many stories of impact from the perspective of the sisterhood personally and professionally and in every way, but it just constantly reinforces the idea that we're in it and there's no choice but to be in it and to try to make a change one step at a time, one sister at a time, because what's the alternative? You know what's going on in the world today. So let's fight for peace. Um, I, one of the most, I guess, impactful impact stories for me was when we screened the film um, on campus. I teach at Rutgers University. I'm involved with the Rutgers Interfaith Alliance. And we have a history of challenge between our Jewish and Muslim uh, students on campus. We had the opportunity to screen. And it was, of course, online. It was during COVID. We had a record number of students participate from um, all religious backgrounds, but mainly Jewish and Muslim students to listen, to, to watch the film. Uh, we watched it synchronously and to have a discussion afterwards. And it was a very real and raw discussion. It absolutely um, impacted everyone who was there participating. Why? Because we had, a, we had honest conversations. We, we as, as our, our chaplaincies who participated in the panel, um, modeled for our students how we can communicate with each other, how we can have discussion, uh, how we can disagree. What is the etiquette in disagreeing? How it's important to get to know one another. Um, and so it was really an amazing experience. And again, I wanna thank the team at Odyssey and, and Transform Films for getting this film out there um, because I'm seeing the impact um, all over the place. And let's just get this message, let's get this, continue to get this message out. That is amazing to hear, Atia. Like it just warms my heart so deeply to, to hear stories like that. You know, I'm not, able to go on all of these screenings and do all of the impact, but knowing that there is such a strong team and so many people so deeply invested in this process, it just, there's there's nothing that could mean more to a filmmaker. So I just wanna say that to everyone on the call and everyone who has participated and to everybody out across the country who's already stepped up in, in this impact campaign. Um, so one of the most surprising elements for me of this past year, uh, and something I, I truly, as we were making this film, had had it was never even crossed my mind, has been the powerful impact that this has made in the corporate space. Uh, the film has really been embraced as a powerful tool to enrich DEI initiatives in companies from the tiny little companies to quite large companies. And I had the pleasure of participating in an event last August with Atia and Rachel Spilker, who is, uh, I think, a currently like a former co-chair of one of the St. Paul chapters. Sorry if that's not true, Rachel. I can't remember if you're still on as co-chair. But we worked with the Minnesota-based um, marketing analytics company, Ovative. Their 200 employees screened the film. It was sort of in a little downturn during COVID. So many of them watched together. Some of them had a private, private link to screen. And then we had about an hour of Q&A with myself and Atia and Rachel. And what was what really strikes me is that you know having made this film and having so many extraordinary women in my life that i tend to circulate with i can forget just how powerful the message of this film is you know when you make when you work in sort of a social justice space and it's, with these kinds of films you're often preaching to the choir you know whether it be at a film festival audience or in, in other environments and in this corporate environment you are just getting access to all of these people that truly would not otherwise see the film. And they come to these Q and A's with, with totally different questions than audiences who are familiar with the sisterhood. Many times the, the message of the sisterhood and the message of sort of intentional relationships and the ability to you know, build bridges and in, increase our empathy and, and you know, build a, a unexpected alliances. These things have never even occurred to a lot of people who sat down to watch the film that day. So I, I've had my mind blown by the experience and I can't wait to kind of make deeper inroads in that space. Uh, 
everything that, that everyone has said, um, you know, this has been such a journey. Um, the one thing I just quickly want to come back to as a, as a filmmaker being in the space, making the film and how that impact has sort of rippled through the whole impact campaign. You know, it was um, one of the most profound experiences I think of my life was to be invited into people's living rooms during the process of making this film and to just bear witness to the um, intentional, hard, deep work that was happening in the living rooms of the sisterhood chapters where we filmed. First of all, that people were willing to welcome strangers in, um, but the amount of just learning that happens in that space and grace and support for one another, I think will inspire me personally for the rest of my life but also to believe in and through this campaign that you know, activism and justice happens in your living room. Change can happen in your living room. And whether that change goes far and wide or is close to home, that's still really, really deep change. And so that is the real true impact I take with me wherever we go with this film to say that every single person has the ability to make change in their living room. The impact of this film is it really, there are so many layers to, to what it provides. And I, from the very first time I, I saw the film, I wasn't part of be, be it being made, but the first time I saw it, uh, I just realized how many different issues it managed to address, and it, they were so beautifully woven in, and and um, in and the fact that some of more difficult issues were brought to the surface, but combined with that warmth and love and 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 hope at the same time. So there is so much beauty in it. And I think uh, it, it addresses anything from women's issues to the equality of it, to many, many other issues. But what I want to kind of lift up is when uh, we screened the film at one of the universities here in Philadelphia area, uh, one of the uh, young men in the audience lifted his hand to, to comment. And um, he was from Myanmar and he was tearful. And he said, this is so touching to see such struggle and such love in the same place. And that was one of the best feedbacks to hear truly. And, um, and yeah, so that, that's, that's what I wanted to share. Thank you. All right, so we are so thankful for those comments and what beautiful work you all do. I wanna celebrate all of that with a giveaway our first giveaway, and this is for a women's t-shirt, Sisterhood Against Hate. And the first person to answer this um, will win that t-shirt and we will announce the winner in a few minutes. So sit tight. The question is, how many women were in the charter chapter of the sisterhood? Answer quickly if you know the answer, get it in so you can get that t-shirt. And we're supposed to have a doorbell. <laughs> Where's our doorbell? I don't know. <laughs> Just ding, dong, ding dong, ding dong. Doorbell rang. Um, we have a surprise guest with us today. We are so excited. Uh, and I'd like to welcome Reverend Mark Fowler from the Tannenbaum Center for Interreligious Understanding. Thank you for being here. Hi, uh, Hi Cheryl. Hi, Tia. Hello, everyone. I hear the doorbell ringing in my head. Maybe that's why it didn't go off on the <laughs> on, on camera and on screen. Mona, a true honor and privilege to meet you and thank you for all of your work. Kirsten and Katie, thank you for such an extraordinary film. And to our friends at Odyssey, thank you for including us and for partnering with us. So quickly, uh, Tannenbaum is a secular and non-sectarian not-for-profit. Our mission is to combat religious prejudice, promote justice, and build respect for religious difference. And basically the film is the living embodiment of our mission. And I have to say that for myself, um, when we, we hosted our screening on March 8th on International Women's Day, uh, and we also, this was the launch of 
the 3,000 Conversations for Building Respect for Religious Difference. Tannenbaum is celebrating its 30th anniversary this year and the screening and the amazing conversation with Cheryl and Atia was the launch of what we hope to be an effort for people to do exactly what the sisters are doing in chapters around the country and around the world, to build respect for religious difference through intimate conversation. And based on what everyone has said here, I would just add that being invited into someone's home is so personal and then being invited into the complexity of their life is what allows us all to see one another fully and wholly. And that salam or shalom does not live in concepts outside of ourselves, but it lives in our hearts. And then we take actions that are consistent with our hearts and with our values. So we have been very um, fortunate to be able to screen the film. We are partners with Odyssey in having more corporations access the, uh, the screening and the materials and hopefully to engage all of you in conversations because we know from our work with corporations that building respect for religious difference is as important as building respect for any other kind of difference. And often, it can be the foundation and the pathway for building respect for all kinds of differences. I would just say that uh, the two things that I, the three things I remember from the screening most of all, one is I remember trying to pull myself together after watching the screening again, when we were about to start the Q&A and I found myself crying all over again. And I thought I'd like cried all the tears that I had, but the story is so moving particularly when uh, Atiyah and Cheryl and other members talk about not just the desire for peace, but how they are standing for peace, even in their own communities, that their own sisters and family members question whether they should even be involved with another or with others. And so the strength of that conviction moved me almost to tears. Um, I also wanna just highlight a quote that Cheryl, and you may have said it a million times, Cheryl, at this point, but one of my big takeaways was coming together to learn about our commonalities so we can celebrate our differences. And that it's not an either or proposition and combating religious prejudice, fighting hate is not a one size fits all proposition. And we have to do both sides of the work in order for us to be successful. And the last thing, I just remember um, the impact that this has certainly had on Tannenbaum as an institution is to give more language and more opportunities for people to see the direct value of building respect for religious difference, that we can actually make change and make differences uh, a reality and a respect for differences a reality. So I am just so grateful for our partnership. I wish you all a happy, happy anniversary. I know that your work, the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom and this documentary have implications that we cannot even see at this moment. And we're just very grateful to be on this journey with you. Thank you, Mark. Love ya. Thank you so much for those beautiful comments. And um, so we appreciate the work that you do as well. Um, we are going to move quickly to our next guest all the way from the UK. All right, so we have Hifsa Haroon Iqbal from Nisa Nashim, which is uh, a sister organization in the UK. And we'd love to hear from you a little bit. Hey, hello everyone, salam and shalom from across the pond. Um, it is a very, very gray day where I live in the West Midlands. Um, and I think the sun should be going down within the next 45 minutes anyway. Um, but it's it's really wonderful and so kind of you to invite me to come and say a few words. Um, and as you said, my name is Hifsa Haroon Iqbal. Um, and I've been part of um, an organization in the UK called Nisa Nashim, which is very similar to our sisters of um, Salam Shalom in that, um, gosh, I've been involved with it for five, six years now, but I've worked very much in, in interfaith for probably about 
20 years. And it, it, it's funny, isn't it? That it becomes so much a part of your life um, that if you have to sort of pinpoint when it all started, you actually can't, you actually can't do it. Um, but Nisan is, is very, very special to me. Um, and I was so delighted. I think it was in, in 2018, Cheryl, that myself and one of our co-founders, Laura Marks, was able to come to your conference. Yes. Um, and it, it was, it was just such a wonderful experience. I know that you've joined us on some of our Zoom events during sort of the pandemic as well. So it is, it's so lovely to be able to, to keep those links. Um, congratulations, the film, um, I haven't seen the full film. I've seen snippets of it, it looks amazing. Um, and I have made a note of the link, I will be in touch because I have a suspicion I may be able to, to um, use it with you um, as part of, of, of my day job as well. But I'll talk more about that later. Um, Thank you so much, Hifsa. That was beautiful. And Tia, I'd love to hear from you on your connection with the UK and how that went for, for you. My God, it was awesome. It was our first in-person screenings when we went, came to the UK. We had the pleasure of screening the film at Cambridge University at the largest synagogue, one of the largest synagogues in Europe. It's certainly the one largest in, in the UK, as well as uh, screening at Westminster Abbey. And so it was wonderful, one, because they were live. Uh, number two, because we were able to have conversations in person after. And as Reverend Mark mentioned, there were tears in the room every, you know, through all of those three screenings. Um, it was lovely to meet the ladies of, of Nissa and Ashim, um, which was great because they were able to come to a couple of the screenings. So it was wonderful to meet them, our sister organization. Um, and for me, on a personal note, my mother is English. The soil of England is in my blood. And it was amazing for me because my, grand, my great grandfather, uh, when we spoke at Westminster Abbey, these are some of my remarks, was part of the Queen's Guard, Queen Victoria's Guard, and he was Protestant, um, Church of England. And his daughter married my grandfather, who was Catholic, and my grandmother converted to Catholicism. And their daughter, my mother, who was raised Catholic, became Muslim. And I talked about this idea that you don't know who you're, what's going to happen in your, in, in, you know, in, in generations from now. Um, you don't know where you came from, right? You, you don't have a choice in any of that. But the idea is that interfaith, like I said, interfaith is in my DNA, obviously, with all these. And my, my son-in-law is also a convert, raised Christian. My daughter's um, in-laws are Christian. And this idea that we're all in this together, what, what, whatever we label ourselves, we're all in this together, and that we are behooved not to get to know one another. And, and using Cheryl's word, it's not the other, it's another. And um, it was such an amazing experience, like I said, for me personally, for me to be hanging out with Kirsten and Reverend Katie, um, we had a great time just being together. Um, and I, I just really cherish that experience. And I was able to see the impact in the eyes of the people who are there watching our film, particularly our, the students who are there at Cambridge University. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that experience. It, wow. It's incredible, isn't it? You know, you, you, you reminded me if, I, if I've got just, just a minute, you know, I, I grew up in a very traditional um, Muslim household um, and my family name is, is Harun, which is Arabic for, for Aaron. And I always recall my, my father saying to me, you know, Jews are our brothers and sisters, um, just like the prophets Musa, and Harun were brothers in the same way we are brothers and, and sisters. Um, and I grew up uh, in a part of Leeds, which is the Jewish area. But actually it was only last year that I discovered how much of the, the my childhood footprint um, is also the childhood footprint of so many of my Jewish sisters who are part of Nisa Nashim because they used to visit their grandparents there, right down to the point that the mosque that me and my family used to worship in used to be the synagogue that they would visit with their grandparents. It was, it was just such an, an incredible moment when I was talking to them and you talk about the streets that you, that you used to walk down and where you used to play and they'll say, yep, you know, exactly, that's, that's exactly how it was for us. And, and I always say to them, you know, there's a message in there, there's a subliminal message in there about shared spaces. 
<laughs> you know, and how it can be done. Um, and it, it's, you know, it's just heartwarming to be part of, of such wonderful organizations. I'm going to finish off because I don't want to speak for too long. I'm going to give you my favorite quote. And my favorite quote is, is actually by a man. Um, his name is uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, and he's respectfully referred to as the Qaeda Azam, the founding father of Pakistan. And, and I love this quote because he said that he, I have always maintained that no nation can ever be worthy of its, of its existence that cannot take its women along with men. No struggle can ever succeed without women participating side by side with men. There are two powers in the world. One is the sword and the other the pen. However, there is a third power stronger than both of those. And that is the power of the women. Wow. That's beautiful. Thank you, Hafsa. Thank you. Thank Atika. you for inviting me. I'm going to have to leave because I've actually got a Nissan Nishim trustees meeting to go to. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure Not to a have problem. you. Thank you so much Bye. for having me. Bye. We are going to so jump right fun. into our PowerPoint. We have some beautiful pictures that we want to share with you, a little bit of visuals to share so that everybody can really see how deep this impact goes. What a beautiful journey you all have been on. It's, it's honestly, I mean, I, I already watched the film. I won't give too much away for those who haven't, but it is a, a tearjerker. I'll, I'll just say that. Um, we do have another guest coming all the way from Washington, D.C. Um, we have Anne Faustin Davis, who is joining us. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anne Faustin Davis. I'm the director of diversity, inclusion, and faith-based partnerships at Odyssey Impact. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to share with you a very special letter that we received from Senator Cory Booker, who wasn't able to join us this afternoon. And the letter reads, Dear friends, it is a pleasure to extend my warmest greetings as you gather to celebrate the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom, a Women's History Month uh, at today's Hate Can't Stop a Sisterhood event. I'm honored to congratulate you on the success of your powerful film, Stranger Sister, which underscores the history of the sisterhood and its tremendous growth into a movement. Since its foundation, the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom has created a network of trust, respect, and relationships between Muslim and Jewish women through tireless, dedicated women-led work aimed at breaking down historic barriers. The sisterhood serves as an example of the power of love and solidarity within our communities. With the help of Odyssey Impact, the social impact of sisterhood story continues to inspire grassroots organizations across the United States to reach across the lines of differences and stop the rise of hate. I am grateful for all of your efforts. Again, congratulations. I look forward to your continued success. Sincerely, Corey A. Booker, United States Senator. Thank you. Congratulations. Hey. 
Well, you almost be doing something right to get a letter from the senators. <laughs> So for um, the next guests, we have some sisters from across the United States. You are welcome to unmute yourself, sisters. Fern, Roberta, Sheila, and Olivia, thank you so much for being here. I think we're going to get started with Roberta. Is that right? Yeah. Greetings from Tucson, Arizona, where I'm sitting on the land of the Tohono O'odham. It's my honor to be speaking to you as the president of the sisterhood. The beauty of the sisterhood lies in the exquisite simplicity of the founder's vision that we Jewish and Muslim sisters, first cousins by religion, language, and even blood, make a space for each other in friendship and action. From the littlest smile to the grandest gestures, we have each other's hearts and backs. Stranger sister captures that connection perfectly. We in the leadership strive every day to strengthen those bonds and expand them beyond our immediate circles so that more and more women can join us. May we always go from strangers to sisters and strength to strength. Hi, I'm Fern Finkel and I'm a community member from the Chicago region. I have met and worked with hundreds of amazing women in the sisterhood. Each has her own special story. We come together with our skills, talents, and passions to live the sisterhood's mission and to have an impact on the world, which reverberates through each of our communities and well beyond. As you have heard, this film captures so much of who we are and what we do. And I tear up just thinking about it. <coughs> I am so grateful and so proud to be part of this powerful movement. I am also so thankful and proud to be part of this movement. My name is Olivia Rotter, and I am a member of the West Hartford team chapter. Um, and I was involved in creating the short film documentary based on teens. And for me, the most impactful memory um, was when we united Muslim and Jewish children who had never met before. And we asked them to draw their version of peace um, personally, I love seeing the children's beautiful representations, and it was incredible and inspiring to unite the, gen the next generation in this peaceful pursuit. So thank you. Hi there, I'm Sheila Sunenshine from Overland Park, Kansas, which is part of the greater Kansas City um, community. We started the first sisterhood chapter um, in Kansas City around 2014. We were the one of the first 10 that started in the whole country. Um, we hosted a screening in conjunction with the Jewish Film Festival here in Kansas City. And we had a journalist from one of the news stations come and moderate. One of my Muslim sisters and I gave a talk back and we brought in Kirsten. Um, via Zoom, and she was on a large screen behind us as, as the talkback panelists. Um, and people were very, definitely very inspired. There's another story I want to tell, which just happened um, a couple of weeks ago. I was in Haifa, Israel, with a group of 20 Jewish people. We were exploring Haifa, meeting people of all different faiths and cultures and also looking at Jewish text and um, self-exploration. So Cheryl was also on the trip and she arranged for a screening with Kirsten um, to show this group of, of Jewish men and women. And like everyone, each Jewish person has a different perspective on what happens in Israel and Palestine, um, as well as meeting Muslim women or Muslim men and women. So we gave a talk back after the screening and two, day, two days later or so, there was a group that went on their own on a field trip to Akko. And one of the women said that they came upon a group who was Palestinian. And in the past, she would have either frozen, she, her body would have been rigid or she just would have looked down or just passed on by. But because of the film and because of the work of the sisterhood, she actually said hello to the group. And that was very transformational. So 
just an inspiring story to see the impact that this film has. Beautiful, beautiful stories. Kirsten, did you want to announce the, the winner? Yeah, definitely. So it looks like Kathy Bender won the t-shirt, right? 12, six Muslims, six Jewish women in the original charter chapter. Kathy, we will be reaching out to you to get your t-shirt size and delivery. Uh, so we'll be sending that out. So thank you, everyone. Thank you to everyone who answered, even to those of you who got it wrong. <laughs> So we want to know who you are. There's so many of us here. We want to. We want you to say hello in the chat and make sure to shout out your chapter if you haven't already. Um, I want to come back to our panel for a deeper dive into uh, a discussion. Um, we want to talk a little bit more about what Sheila just uh, touched on. We want to talk about Palestine. We want to talk about Israel. And to do this, we also want to invite the co-chairs of the IP committee uh, Lama Rimawi and Annette Rotter to join the panel. Um, I know this, this can be um, a really divisive issue because we have very strong feelings and beliefs about um, this and there's also a lot of trauma. So um, it's, I, I wanna acknowledge your um, showing up to have this conversation and um, I'll just pitch it to you guys. Thank you and good afternoon to everybody. So appreciate that introduction and all of the discussion today. My name is Annette Rotter and it is my honor to serve on the Sisterhood Board and to co-chair the recently established Israel-Palestine Committee with my sister Lama. Hi Lama. And um, for those of you who have seen the documentary, you will no doubt recall the part where the Sisterhood Board is contemplating pursuing dialogue about Israel and Palestine with what is clearly palpable tension and trepidation. You know, we all know other interfaith organizations that have been torn apart by trying to engage with the fraught feelings about Israel-Palestine for Muslims and Jews. And we worried, would our bonds be powerful enough to see us through this understandable, painful process? And yet, we were also feeling the increasing pressure of this elephant in the room, especially as we watched ourselves in the documentary. Well, you know, I, I'm moved and proud to share that since that time, the Sisterhood Board got busy and we participated in two retreats. We studied the practice of nonviolent communication, and we spent time with Palestinian and Israeli former combatants who affirmatively chose to become peace builders together and to lead others. And so not only did the board wind up engaging in this deep dialogue and listening with our hearts to our respective attachments to Palestine and Israel, but we were inspired to take a position as an organization that is absolutely consistent with our sisterhood values. And we wanted to share that position with all of you here today. The Sisterhood of Salam Shalom holds a wide spectrum of views on Palestine and Israel. We recognize the complexity of the issues, the passions they evoke and, and endeavor to hold space to hear each other we believe any response to the conflict must be based on human rights, safety, and self-determination for Palestinians and Israelis alike. The mission of the sisterhood is, to, is based on our shared values to build relationships between Muslim and Jewish women of all ages, to promote and advocate for human rights, and to end acts of hate against all human beings. We commit to freedom, equality, and justice for all. Um, it is now my pleasure to introduce my co-chair, Lamara Maui, who will take it from here. Hi, I'm Lamara Maui. Thank you so much for having me. Um, when I joined the Sisterhood five years ago, the co-chair of my chapter, Ellen, gave me a covenant to review. It was a document that had some guidelines for new chapters. One of the rules that really struck me was that we could not talk about Israel-Palestine for at least one year. Well, I laughed. I said, I'm Palestinian, and just saying that is a political statement. I said, maybe I'm the wrong person for this organization. How could I not talk about Palestine? It's my family's story. It's my story. 
Needless to say, Ellen was incredible. She reached out to the leadership of the sisterhood, and I was able to talk about my grandfather who had to flee Jerusalem with the clothes on his back, my grandmother who never fully recovered from the loss of everything she held dear. It was so important to me to talk about what happened to them and what has happened to me. I was asked today to talk about the Israel-Palestine Committee. I'm so honored to be co-chair with Annette. As part of the Sisterhood's overall mission, the Israel-Palestine Committee seeks to inspire Jewish and Muslim women and teens to work together to champion nonviolent means for achieving peace and human and civil rights for all Palestinians and all Israelis. We have a plan of action, and that includes to actively support peace building and human and civil rights organizations focused on Israel-Palestine, to provide educational and experiential opportunities for our members on Israel-Palestine, to provide safe, brave, reflective, inspirational spaces and support for members to deepen dialogue, and to leverage the individual and collective voices of the sisterhood for peace and human and civil rights in the public sphere. sphere. We kicked off our plan of action in January with the virtual Israel-Palestine dual narrative trip. It was an incredible experience to see Israel-Palestine from the perspective of an Israeli and a Palestinian tour guide. We have planned monthly programs focused on learning more about Israel-Palestine as well as learning about active steps our sisters can take to support the sisterhood's mission. We're developing resources for our sisters to continue to build relationships to learn more about Israel-Palestine and to engage in respectful dialogue. I want to thank you so much for having me. And I just wanted to add that my background is a picture of the suburb of Jerusalem that my grandparents once lived in. It's called Lifta. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lama and Annette. It's difficult and truly rewarding and rewarding for all of us, those of us who have contact with your work. Thank you. Um, we are going to um, talk about, uh, it's in your chat actually, um, there are, there's a call to action for those of you who are here and, and paying attention. We want you to take it upon yourselves to join this action work, this actionable work. It's not just about talking, it's about doing something. Um, and we want to invite you to host your own screening, start a conversation in your community. We want to invite you to step out of your comfort zone, commit to engaging in conversation with someone who's not necessarily from your own community. And to reach out to different faith groups in your community, collaborate on relationships and building different initiatives, just like the sisterhood. It takes all of us. It truly takes all of us doing our own work beautifully, diligently, um, with passion and love. And um, we each individually contributing to the collective make the difference. So join the National Social Impact Campaign. Um, and we have a short video of inspiring messages right now that we hope you will enjoy. Good evening, sisters. Uh, I'm excited to uh, be here uh, and to celebrate with you. You know, little did I know in 2017 when I received a call from Cheryl how my life would be changed uh, by coming into contact with the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom. And then to travel together in 2018 uh, on a civil rights tour and to watch us learn together. So beautifully captured uh, in that great film, Stranger Sister. So sisters, I know at times uh, it may seem dark. I know at times it may seem hopeless. I know at times it might seem that evil uh, is pressing uh, at every hand. Uh, but for me, it's just a reminder of the work that you do and the reality that hate cannot stop uh, a sisterhood. And I encourage you uh, with the words of the late Congressman John Lewis to continue to find ways, my sisters, to get into good trouble. My name is Rifat Malik and I am the founding editor-in-chief of American Muslim Today. We're a national non-profit digital newspaper committed to transforming the narrative around millions of Muslims living here in the US and other Western countries. As a female-led platform, we are proud to use our public service journalism 
to champion the critically important work of the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom. And we salute the courage of these fearless women in pursuing the path of peace using pioneering interfaith dialogue. It's also why we are honored to host Stranger Sister and a post-screening discussion of this seminal film here in Dallas, Texas on June the 5th. On behalf of American Muslim Today, Happy Women's History Month. Salam and Shalom. My name is Dr. Katherine Orsborn, and on behalf of the El Hibri Foundation, I'd like to express our support of the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom and their stellar community building work. By bringing together Muslim and Jewish women and fostering neighborly love between them, the Sisterhood embodies our vision of an inclusive and pluralistic society. Year after year, we've witnessed thousands of diverse women gather at the Sisterhood's conferences and forge authentic, trusting and long-lasting friendships, and using that love to serve their communities all over the country. This is Faith in Action, and we are proud to support the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom. Hello, I'm Diana Eck with the Pluralism Project at Harvard University, and I'm delighted to congratulate you on this observance in Women's History Month. The film is remarkable in that it moves from the meeting and relationship of ordinary women and the creation of relationships of trust to the extent that you are able to discuss some of the toughest issues of our time. In my class this fall, a general education class in civics and uh, and interreligious relations, we were able to enable students to see some of the most cutting edge work in women's interreligious relations today. Hello, my name is Katie Givens Khan from Odyssey Impact, and I lead the new Multi Faith Odyssey Fellows Program, which equips emerging faith leaders to convene brave and healing conversations across lines of difference on challenging civic issues, leveraging the power of film. Last year, we screened Stranger Sister around the country, and recently during UK Interfaith Week. And together with our partner, the Rose Castle Foundation, we time and time again observed in seminary classrooms, in multi-faith dialogue events, how the story of the sisterhood inspired so many to do the brave work of bridging divides and standing against hate. At Odyssey, we are just so honored to be working with the many sisters of the sisterhood, and we are not done. So here's to future work ahead. Happy Women's History Month. This month, I would like to honor an amazing organization and sisterhood, the Sisterhood of Salam and Shalom, for allowing young girls like myself to have safe spaces to unapologetically be ourselves and to have spaces to talk about important issues, especially issues relating to our identity. I'm so happy to have been able to be in solidarity and community with such amazing women and teen girls. So thank you so much for allowing me to have these experiences. Hi, my name is Jennifer Peace, and it is a joy to be with you, even virtually. I just get such a lift every time I view that film or um, share in a discussion with a group who is viewing the film. And I was really honored to help write some discussion questions to engage communities in deeper conversations that I think are sparked by viewing the fortitude and hope and commitment that the women in the film express, where there's so much division and so much polarization and so much demonization, films like Stranger Sister are such a bomb. Ignorance is a trigger of hate. Trauma healing is a basic for building peace. There were so many golden nuggets in this documentary. I applaud the work of Atia and Cheryl with the sisterhood. I think it is important to have these difficult, uncomfortable conversations about the way we separate, about the way we other people who are different than us. I love that there is a teen branch to the sisterhood because when you can empower the next generation to really tackle some of these difficult issues of hatred, of bigotry, of difference, of less than-ness, I think you really can make a difference. So kudos to, to the women, to the children, to all people who stand up for justice.
we just want to say thank you so much for coming and being here. And if you enjoyed today's discussion, uh, I really want you to consider hosting a virtual screening of Stranger Sister with your community, your organization, your house of worship, your school, your whatever it is, share, share the love. Feel free to share this with your networks. Mona. Do have a winner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. Let's I didn't want to go before. Uh, so uh, randomly chosen by when they signed on to the event today, uh, Livonia Abivana, you have won a free complimentary screening of the film along with a gift card for movie snacks for your group. So yay. <laughs> Thank you everyone for being part of this. On behalf of Odyssey Impact, the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom, myself, I want to say uh, thank you to our esteemed guests, panelists, and thank you so much to this community for joining us today. And of course, to Pro Bono ASL, thank you so much for being here and interpreting for us. And to the entire team at Odyssey and Sisterhood for working so hard, you have my deepest gratitude for your hard work. Thanks, everyone. It was such a joy. And thank you. Thank to you all so of much, everyone. This was such thank a pleasure. You. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Thank Mona, you. it was great to be together. Kirsten and Katie, we love you. You are our sisters. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you to everybody in the whole Odyssey Sisterhood team for, for working together to make this happen. And Mona, we're just so excited about your upcoming show on PBS this summer. So we want we will all be watching. <laughs> Thank you. You, all of you, and my mom, and my mother in law, and then everybody else. <laughs> we go. We're going to spread the word. We're going to spread the word. Thank you, Mona. Bye. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.